Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have another pen here for review and this is an interesting pen. Uh, this is a Conklin Endure pen and I have to say I have admired this pen for a while now. This is uh, an abalone shell pen and you can see that this really, really does sparkle there in terms of the abalone that you can see there. Now, I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with Conklin's. Uh, I do have a couple of the very, I want to say original um, Conklin Nighthawks, the Goulet Nighthawks actually. They were Goulet exclusives with Yovo nib, number six nibs, and they wrote very well. Um, but a number of Conklin's that I've tried since then, uh, and they're just standard Conklin's, have not been that good a writer. Uh, there's the, I think the Duraflex, the Omniflex, uh, lots of flow issues with their nibs. So when Gary had, uh, Gary Dapper man, um, a friend of mine had this pen and he asked if there were any pens in his collection that I'd like to review. I said, yeah, I'd, I'd like to review the Conklin Endura, please, because this is quite an interesting pen. I do like this black ruthenium uh, plating that's going on as well. Uh, you can see it says Endura there on the cap band. Limited edition 1229 of 1898. So this is a limited edition. It is a numbered edition. 1898 pens though is a lot of pens. Uh, so I always think it's a little bit much when it goes over a thousand uh, in terms of uh, the, the number of pens made. You can see Conklin there on the clip. Now, uh, is the clip, the clip is quite strong as well. Now, interestingly enough, the pen itself is cylindrical, round, but the strips of abalone are not. So it looks as though the pen is faceted, even though it's not. The facets are under the surface there. So it actually makes for a very nice, smooth pen now if i unscrew the cap you'll see again another ruthenium plated section here and then you will also see a conklin nib there and uh, that one is a medium it says conklin toledo usa um now the section unscrewed there shows a international converter and i will ink this pen up and try it now there is a little bit of a ring here of a i want to say a step down but it's more of a step up actually that you can see there on on that uh, between the section and the body there that ring does actually stand proud so if you find the section a little bit short and or even a little bit thin and you want to actually write up here on the threads you really do feel that so it does feel a little bit bulbous there so i think it would be very difficult to write up here on the threads you'd almost have to hold it up here on the body if you wanted to write higher up now will the cap post yes it does and it screws in place um, but as you can see there, the, the clip is actually not screwed, uh, but it has uh, now matched up. So you can match it up. It does have multiple threads there. Um, how does it feel in my hand uh, with the cap on? It doesn't feel too bad. It's a little bit back-weighted, I would say. Um, it just does feel a little bit back-weighted, and I'm just having a look. I want to say that, that that clip is actually off center, but when you follow the abalone down, I think it's just an optical illusion. Um, it is a little bit back weighted, and, and I'd have to say that I think I'd prefer it without the cap screwed on. But without the cap screwed on, it is quite a short pen, though. So I think really this is a little bit more like a pocket pen, so you do have to screw that cap on. I do like the screw threads on the back though, that that is quite a nice touch. 
uh, I do think that that makes it 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 work really well. But yeah, it does it does feel quite back weighted. So, and I think most of that metal here on the what is the cat finial is is actually causing that to be back weighted. So, in the size of my hand, it is quite small. Um, if I were to write with it, I would be writing like this. So, for me, that that is quite small. And typically when I have short pens or thin pens, I tend to death grip them uh, and then I get hand fatigue. So I think I would have to uh, screw on that cap and make sure that that I wrote with it with that cap on. And I think it would be fine at that point. It's just that it is a little bit back weighted. But if you are writing like that, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. If you have a lower angle, maybe a 25 degree angle writing, then I think you will will find it a little bit too back weighted. So I think with that, let's go and do a size check. We'll do a weight check. We'll do a pen comparison. And then we'll do a writing sample. So the full length of the pen, we are looking about 136 millimeters in length. The length of the cap, we're looking at 60 millimeters in length. We'll do a check on the body's length and We'll go to the tip of the nib or tip of the tines, and that's 120 millimeters in length. So that's definitely the reason why I'm finding that a bit short because anything really below like 122, I, I do find a little bit short. So that's probably the reason why because it is essentially a short pen, probably not a pocket pen, but it's still fairly short. So I think let's uh, do a weight check. Now this is a metal pen, so uh, this is going to be a heavy pen. You can see there it's just over 46 grams in weight, and that's uninked. The weight of the cap we're looking at just under 20 grams in weight. And then the weight of the body we're looking at. Just over 26 and a half grams, just under 27 grams in weight. So that is still quite a weighty pen. So I think with that, let's go and do a comparison with other pens. So from left to right, we have a Conway Stewart Churchill Blue Stardust. We have a Conway Stewart Churchill Red Stardust. We have a uh, Atelier Lusso Carina, and this is in the Black Ice Alumilite. We have a Twisby Vac 700R. We have the Conklin Endura in abalone shell. We have a Dens Pens Fafnir. We have an Estabrook Camden. We have a Twist Pens Volcano. We have a Scribo Fill in the blue grey and a Scribo Fill in the blue black. So let's do a writing sample. So this is the Conklin. And it's the Endura. And it's in the Abalone shell. Uh, and uh, this is a medium. Uh, and it is a still nib there. Um, it is a Conklin made nib though, I would say. Uh, the uh, ink in here is uh, Pelican. Edelstein. And it is uh, Appetite. Now, in terms of line variation, definitely I'm seeing here a Western medium. If I push it a little bit more, I can almost push to a broad. And you can see there that there is no hard starts or skips going on. Now, in terms of ink wetness, let's take a look. So, this is quite a wet pen. Now, I would say that it does have a ruthenium plated nib. So, like most ruthenium plated nibs, it does have a little bit of 
uh, feedback, pencil-like feedback to it. But it's not unpleasant. It's just something you have to get used to. So if you're used to that kind of feedback, then that's fine. If you are if you really like smooth nibs, I would try to avoid ruthenium plated nibs because in a lot of cases, those nibs are coated and the nib, the tines are actually coated as well. So it's not, the nib isn't coated first and then the iridium point welded onto the nib now you can actually resolve that you can actually smooth the nib and you can take the nib to micro mesh if you want to and i have done that before on ruthenium plated nibs you will find though that you will remove the plating on the iridium point tipping on the nib so it won't then remain black but you can do that if you want to but if you have a little bit OCD and you don't want to do that then I would say avoid a ruthenium plated nib they do look very nice and I do like them um, but they will have a little bit of more of a pencil like feedback to the nibs so if you if you don't if you like a smooth nib then uh, then you might not like this but if you don't mind pencil like feedback then you probably will like this now the nib itself actually writes pretty well. Um, I know a lot of Conklins have had issues with nibs. Um, I certainly know a lot of the like the Duraflex, the Omniflex nibs. Uh, that I know a lot of people that have complained about those nibs in the past. Uh, I've tried a few myself, and I've really not got on with them. This nib does write a lot better. I don't know if Gary did tune the nib though. Uh, he may have tuned that himself. I do like this abalone shell. I, I think this is really, really nice. Uh, I I do like that pen, and I have to say that uh, I've always wanted an abalone shell like this in a pen. Uh, my preference would be, I like the weight, um, but I would like a longer pen. Uh, I do find that this pen, for me, is a little bit too short. Now, it probably isn't short for a lot of people, but I just prefer a pen is around about 130 millimeters in length not 120 i just find 120 just too short but outside of that i think it is quite a nice pen um the pen writes well it does put down uh, a medium line of ink and the ink is quite wet as well so there you have it that's my review of the conklin endura abalone shell with a medium steel nib Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.